Hello, in this video we're going to look at using matrices to solve systems of equations. Now matrices have excellent applications when solving systems of equations and to show you how we're going to first solve a regular system of equations using our traditional methods. So we're going to try to do substitution here. So let's look at this first equation. We're going to rewrite it as x equals negative 18 plus 4y. Next up we're going to take this and plug it in for x. So we'll get negative, negative 18 plus 4y plus 3y equals 11. That gives positive 18 minus 4y plus 3y equals 11. Combining that gives negative y equals negative 7. So y equals 7. We then take that and plug it in for y. So x is equal to negative 18 plus 4 times 7. So negative 18 plus 28. And x is equal to 10. So there we go. We've got our solution. x equals 10 and y equals 7. Now just for fun, let's see if we can use matrices. So let's take a to be 1, negative 4, negative 1, and 3. We're going to take the matrix X to be X and Y, and the matrix B to be negative 18 and 11. Well, then we would have A times X equals B. And what we would have is actually a similar or equivalent form of the system of equations, but in matrix form. Now, just to show you why this is equivalent, let's go ahead and multiply these two matrices. So this would give us 1 times X minus 4 times Y. And then this will give us negative x plus 3y equals to negative 18 and 11. So here we have a matrix with two rows and one column, two rows and one column. And so this entry here has to be equal to this entry. This entry here has to be equal to this entry. And so this is fundamentally the same thing as this system right here. Now if you notice, the way we create these matrices is the right hand side gets stacked up in a matrix. The coefficients of the variables, the 1, the negative 4, the negative 1, and 3, get popped into a different matrix, and then the variables x, y get called kind of like a variable x, like a variable matrix, just x and y. Now we're going to need to do a bit of work before we can solve these. The first thing we need to learn about is a determinant. So just like the absolute value of a gives the length of a real number, the absolute value of a gives us some measure of the length of a matrix. Now, of course, it doesn't make sense in a traditional length because a matrix is not a regular number, but there is a useful analogy that the determinant of a, little bar is there, absolute value, we call it now determinants for matrix, for matrix C, the determinant of a, it means the bigness or the volume of a matrix. So let's use the definition here. How would you find the determinant of A? Well, you calculate the determinant of A as follows. You take A and D, the two corner entries, and you multiply them. Then you take B and C, the other two corners, and you multiply them, and then you subtract the result. So in this example here, you do 2 times 7 minus 5 times 1. So that will give me 14 minus 5 or 9. So we can say the determinant of this matrix is 9. Let's try this one over here. 3 times 5 minus 4 times negative 1. That'll be 15 plus 4, so 19. Now we can actually find determinants of larger matrices. If the matrix gets really big, something like this, we have more complicated formulas for finding the determinant. So the way these work, uh, they're a little bit challenging, but once you do one or two, you should get the hang of it. To find a bigger determinant like this, what we do is we break it down into smaller determinants. We look, for example, at A1, we grab that first value, and then we cross off the row and column associated with A1, and we have this little block down here. And we look at the determinant of that block. Then we look at the next coefficient, the B1 there, that entry, we cross off this row and this column, and we make a little block out of the A23 and the C23. We look at that determinant. Finally, we look at the C1 entry. We cross off those two, and we have this block left over, and we find the determinant of that block. So I'll show you what this looks like in practice. 
So we take our 2, and then we would cross off just like this, and we would be left with just a 2, 3, 1, and negative 3. And we find its determinant. Subtract, we have to subtract the second one. 3, and then we cross off here and here. So it gives 1, 3, negative 2, negative 3. 1, 3, negative 2, negative 3 plus negative 2, cross off here and here, gives 1, 2, negative 2, negative 1, 2, negative 2, and just positive 1. So now we do the determinants of each of these smaller ones. So this will be 2 times negative 3 is negative 6, minus 3 times 1 is 3. 1 times negative 3 is negative 3, and then negative 6, so plus 6. 2, 1 times 1 will be 1, negative 4 becomes positive 4. So we keep working. This will give me 2 times negative 9, minus 3 times 3, minus 2 times 5. So negative 18, minus 9, minus 10. So that will be negative 18, subtract 19, so negative 37. So definitely a lot more work to find the determinant of a 3 by 3, but you can still do it. Now, how would you solve this equation, 5x equals 30? Now, you might think to divide both sides by 5 to give us x equals 6, and that's one way of doing it. But there's another way that I think is going to be more instructive for us as we do this matrix question. We have 5x equals 30. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides by 1 -fifth. So I'm going to put a 1 -fifth on this side and a 1 -fifth on this side. Now, 1 -fifth times 5 just gives me 1. So 1x, or just x. And then 1 -fifth times 30 gives me 6. Now, notice a key aspect of the solution is the ability to divide by 5. I divided by 5, or another word for the division is multiplication by the inverse. That's what I did over here in red. Multiplying by 1 -fifth on both sides, it's the same as dividing by 5. And it's a little bit cleaner because it uses multiplication. Now, how did I know to do the 1 -fifth, or how did I know to do divide by 5? Well, I was looking for that magical number, 1 -fifth, that when I times it by 5 would give me 1. This is called the inverse of 5. So, we found the inverse of 5, and that's easy, since we know that 1 -fifth times 5 gives 1. But could we do the same for the matrix? This is our matrix we were looking at before, 1, negative 4, negative 1, and 3. And could you find a matrix that when you multiply some matrix by this special matrix A, you, you get 1? Well, you won't get 1, but hopefully you'll get something similar. And let's see if this matrix here just happens to be what we're looking for. Well, we'll get negative 3 times 1, which is negative 3 and then plus 4. Here we'll get 12 minus 12. This will give us negative 1 plus 1 and then 4 minus 3. So that works out to be 1, 0, 0, 1. Oh hey, this is the identity matrix. Remember this is like the matrix version of the number 1. It's, it's like a matrix one. And so sure enough here was our matrix we were looking at before. This was our matrix A. And it looks like we found the inverse or the opposite of A. Because when we multiplied them, we just got I, the identity. And in fact, the special matrix that we found over here, this matrix, it is indeed the inverse of our matrix A. Because when you multiply it, you get the identity. So let's go back to our system of equations we were trying to solve. Remember, this is the one we were trying to solve with matrices. This is where we got the 1, the negative 4, the negative 1, and the 3. So we have it here in matrix form. And what we're going to do is take this equation that represents the system, and we're going to multiply both sides by A inverse. So we have this representation of our system, AX equals B. We're going to multiply both sides by A inverse. Now, a inverse times a gives you i, but i times x also just gives us x, because i is like the matrix 1. It doesn't change anything when you multiply it. On this side, though, well, we have a inverse b. That does change something. We have to calculate 
A inverse times B. But I think we could. I think we could actually figure out this value. And so let's, uh, let's give it a try. So we know from above that A inverse is equal to negative 3, negative 4, negative 1, and negative 1. And we know that B is negative 18 and 11. Well, let's uh, do the multiplication here. So negative 3 times negative 18 will be 54. And negative 4 times 11 will be negative 44. This will be 18, and then this will be negative 11. Well, if we do that subtraction, we're going to get 10 and 7. And we'll look at that. Those are the values, if you remember, that we got from our regular system. This tells us right here that x equals 10 and y equals 7. Now, of course, we had to do a lot of work to get to this point. But technically, the only math we needed to do was right here. If we just multiply these two matrices, our answer pops out right away. No need to substitute and solve and isolate and do all the algebra. You just do a little bit of multiplication and a little bit of subtraction and you have your answer. Well, almost. We're avoiding one key concept. This part right here, this A inverse, where in the world did it come from? I mean, I know it worked, it got us a right answer, but where did I come up with it? And if you look back here on the notes, it sort of just appears out of nowhere. So I think we need a method for finding that inverse. So just to recap the definition, the inverse of a matrix A is a matrix with same dimensions such that A inverse times A gives I. So it's the special matrix that when you multiply, you get I. Now for a two by two matrix, we actually have a beautiful formula. A inverse is equal to one over the determinant and then this weird thing. Well, if our entries are A, B, C, D, it means that we swap these two and we make these two negative. So let's see if we could give the formula a try. We need to have, of course, the determinant. And that's part of the formula. So let's find the determinant of A. The determinant of A is going to be equal to, well, we remember this also has a formula. We get 3 and subtract 4, which will be negative 1. And then we have to take our formula for A inverse to be 1 over negative 1. We swap these two, and we make these two negative. Well, they're already negative, which makes them positive. Now, 1 over negative 1 is just negative 1. And finally, we can multiply it in. Remember, when you're multiplying by just a number, it goes in to all the entries, giving you the following, negative 3, negative 4, negative 1, negative 1, which is actually, if you look back on the previous page, our special matrix that just appeared. Well, this is how it appeared. We used the formula for it. So given this matrix, let's see if we can find its inverse and verify that it's correct. So the absolute value or the determinant of A will be equal to negative 6 to negative 5, 1, which is negative 6 subtract negative 10. So that'll be 4. A inverse is going to be 1 over 4. 1, negative 6, negative 2, 5, which we can then multiply that 4 in, so a quarter, negative 2 quarters, 5 quarters, and negative 6 quarters. Now to verify that it's true, we should do A inverse times A, and we should get the identity when we do this. So let's double check by doing some matrix multiplication. So we'll start off with our inverse, and we'll multiply it by our original matrix. So we'll get 1 quarter times negative 6, so that's negative 6 quarters. And then negative 2 time, over 4 times negative 5, that'll be plus, well, 10 quarters. Next up, we'll have 2 quarters minus 2 quarters. Down here, we're going to have negative 30 quarters plus 30 quarters. And finally, here, we're going to have 
10 quarters minus 6 quarters. Now if you go ahead and simplify that, well negative 6 quarters plus 10 quarters is 4 quarters, which is 1. That's 0, that's 0, and that's also 1. So indeed it checks out, and we have found the inverse. So it seems like we can find the inverse pretty readily. Uh, it's a formula, you have to apply the formula properly, but there's not too much algebra involved. It's just a little bit of arithmetic, a little bit of multiplying, a little bit of dividing. And so let's try it. We're going to do 3x plus 2y equals 3 and 5x plus 3y equals negative 8. Again, if you want, you're welcome to solve this using substitution elimination. You can maybe try to race me, but I'm going to use my matrix method because I think it's more fun, it's cleaner, and it just doesn't require algebra, which I think is so neat. So we grab the matrix 3, 2, 5, 3. And we grab our other matrix B, which is 3 and negative 8. We find the determinant of A, which is going to be, well, 9 minus 10, so negative 1. We find the inverse, which is 1 over negative 1. Swap these, make these negative. Well, this is just a negative 1, so we can multiply that in pretty easily, giving us negative 3, 2, 5, negative 3. And finally, for our last step, we multiply the inverse times b. So we have negative 3, 2, 5, negative 3 times 3, negative 8. And that gives us negative 9, negative 16, 15 plus 24, which works out to negative 25, and 39. Well, there's your answer. x equals 25, y equals 39. And you're welcome to go ahead and try this one on your own to try using regular algebra to solve it. You'll get those same numbers. But again, I think it's very beautiful and very clean that we can use matrices to solve this without having to do any algebra. I think that's a very neat technique. Now, the technique of being able to solve very complicated systems without using algebra is incredibly important. And one of the areas it's important in is with circuits. So we're going to find the currents I1, I2, and I3 as shown in this figure. So this is a circuit diagram, and if you haven't taken physics, that's all right. I'll explain to you the basics of what's going on, and we'll take a look at where the math comes into play. Now, because the circuit is not a simple series or parallel combination of resistances, the problem is one where we must use Kirchhoff's rules. So what we have to do is determine the flow of current, and it looks like in this portion here, the current is going this way. So we'll draw a little arrow showing the current going counterclockwise. Now down here in the bottom it looks like the current is flowing this way so we'll draw an arrow with the current going clockwise. One thing for Kirchhoff's rules we can use is that whenever you have a junction like this with current going in and going out we know that the current that goes in must be equal to the sum of the current going out. So we get I1 is equal to I2 plus I3. Next up, we can go ahead and follow the current through a closed loop, and we know that through the whole closed loop, we must get zero. So by zero, I mean we're gonna get zero for our voltages. So we start, let's say here, and we notice we have 10. So we'll get 10. Then we're going to subtract off the resistance we get. There's six ohms there, and it's gonna be multiplied by our current of I. So six I. 1. Then we continue to follow it up and we notice that we have up here 14 volts which is going to be added to our voltage. And then of course we have another resistor down here and this is going to be current I2. So we're going to subtract off 4 I2. In our second loop, it'll be very similar. We're going to, let's say, start here. We're going to go through here and get the 10, then the minus 6i1, but down here we're going to get minus 2i3. So 
So 10 minus 6 I1 minus 2 I3 equals 0. Now another way to write this would be to put the variables on one side and the numbers on the other. So from the first equation we have I1 and then we're going to get negative I2 and negative I3. So I1 subtract I2 subtract I3 equals 0. Next up on the next equation we have negative 6i1 and we have negative 4i2 and then we have a 10 and a 14 so we might have to do this in two steps we'll have negative 6i1 negative 4i2 plus 24 so I'm gonna aim to eventually move this 24 to the other side but we'll do that on another step and then in the next one we've got negative 6i1 minus 2i3 plus 10 equals 0. So again, let's go ahead and move the numbers to the other side. And in fact, when we do this, this will become negative and this will become negative. So we're going to have a whole equation of negative. So instead of doing that, you can think of moving these to the right-hand side and moving these to the right-hand side, just to keep everything positive. So our equations will now look like this. I1 minus I2 minus I3 equals 0. 6 I1 plus 4I2 equals 24. And 6I1 plus 2I3 equals 10. So if you look, this setup here is starting to look a little bit like a matrix. We have an I1, I2, I3, and so we have again I1 and I2, this one's missing an I3, this one's missing an I2, but I think we could make a matrix out of this thing. So what we're gonna do now, and we're gonna pretend that everything up to here, if you didn't understand any of that physics, if you didn't understand any of Kirchhoff's laws, any of that, that's totally fine. We're gonna pretend that none of that happened, and now just look at this. We have a system of three equations with three variables, and we're gonna try to solve this using linear algebra. So let's go ahead and make a little more space down here. So we can go ahead and grab the matrix that would represent the system. What we do is we simply grab 1, negative 1, negative 1. That's that first row of the i's, then 6, 4, and 0, 6, 0, and 2. And of course we grab b, which represents the right-hand side, 0, 24, and 10. So we have our classic AX equals B. To solve this, of course, we need A inverse. And so you can either calculate A inverse on your own, which, of course, you don't know how to do because 3 by 3 inverses are a little bit tricky. So you can type it into the Internet. Eventually, when you take more linear algebra, you'll find methods for finding the inverse of a 3 by 3. But for right now, you can just go ahead and type it in on Google. Any kind of A inverse or matrix inverse 3 by 3 calculator should give you the following. 1 over 22, 4, 1, 2, negative 6, 4, negative 3, negative 12, negative 3, and 5. All right, so let's go ahead and solve it. We know that to solve a system like this, we calculate A inverse times B. So it would be 1 over 22, 4, 1, 2, negative 6, 4, negative 3, negative 12, negative 3, and 5. We multiply this by 0, 24, and 10. Now I'm going to leave that 1 over 22 in front, and I'm just going to focus on the matrix part here. So I'm going to get 4 times 0 is 0, 1 times 24 is 24, and 2 times 10 is 20. So that will give 24 plus 10. Then again, negative 6 times 0 is 0. 4 times 24 is going to be 96. And then negative 30. And then 0 times 12 is 0. 3 times negative 24, negative 72. And then plus 50. So we go ahead and do our addition here. That's going to give us... Oh, don't forget that 1 over 22 in front. It's going to give us 44, 66, and negative 22. 
which works out to just 2, 3, and negative 1. So what that means is I1 is equal to 2, I2 is equal to 3, and I3 is equal to negative 1. So we've been able to solve our system. There are three values for current. And what's interesting is if you notice, I3 is a negative value, which means that if you go back to the physics of this setup, I3 apparently here is a negative current. And this sometimes happens when you do Kirchhoff's rules. We assumed that the current was flowing in the clockwise direction down here, but I3 is negative. What that means is the current was actually flowing upwards. And that happens sometimes when you do these physics problems. You sometimes set up the direction in the wrong way. So it's okay. Our answer is negative. And what that means is the current is not actually flowing in a clockwise direction. It's actually flowing this way in a counterclockwise. I3 is actually moving upwards. And that's what that negative sign indicates. But what's so interesting and so powerful about this linear algebra is you can solve this whole setup of physics here without really doing any algebra. You set up the equations and then all you have to use is some basic addition and multiplication. The matrices take care of all of that work for you. And so it's pretty powerful and pretty amazing that you can do that using matrices. So for some exercises, practice some determinants and solving some systems of equations. I don't have any exercises with you doing any Kirchhoff's laws, but if you are in physics and you have covered some of these electrical circuits, you're more than welcome to try solving them using a matrix and an online matrix calculator. And as always, thanks for watching.